meditation is a very complicated thing. Uh, it's every person you talk to who meditates will give you a different almost definition, different observation, different what it's good for, uh, different how you do it. So what I'm telling you, and, so, and some people like Koppel, who's kind of my coach guy, hates it, okay? He hates the whole concept of meditation. But I'm gonna tell you my version. I'm gonna tell you what I learned that worked for me. Um, first, I'm gonna uh, back up a little bit. Uh, by the way, there's a meditation master here. We're actually all meditation masters. So my meditation is no better than yours. I'm just telling you mine. Um, so, Medit so let's, let's, let's think about how, how your mind works, okay? When you're walking down the street, your mind is usually associating. It's in free association. So it's basically saying, oh, uh, this woman just crossed the street with a dog. Oh, I used to have a dog just like that. Oh, when I had a dog like that, I lived in that apartment. Oh, that apartment, God, that guy overcharged me. Oh, I hated that guy. So your mind is always just free associating and connecting things around you and having sort of this uncontrollable stream of thoughts. Um, that's like kind of like your default, how your mind operates. Um, beyond that is contemplation. Contemplation is when you sit there and you direct your mind to one topic, to one subject. Uh, scientists are essentially in contemplation. They're working on a specific problem. A poet, when they're like trying to figure out the right words for the poem, you know, they're in contemplation. Um, sometimes an author can be in contemplation when they're plotting out the narrative for their book. Um, <clears throat> next, beyond that, is concentration. Concentration is when your mind is focused on one thing. And <clears throat> this can be, you know, you're surfing and you're riding a wave. Uh, you're driving a car at a high speed around a bend. Uh, it could be you're having sex with somebody. Your mind is focused on that act. Uh, so concentration is when your mind is single pointed. Most meditation techniques are concentration methods. And there are many, many meditation techniques. If you ever want to run through a bunch of them, you can pick up a, pick up a book called The Book of Secrets by Osho. Uh, and I know he's gotten a bad rap popularly uh, recently, but he was, he was a pretty smart guy. Um, but there's a, there's a book called The Book of Secrets by Osho. And it's actually a translation. It's a translation of an old, I believe, Sanskrit book that has something like 120 different meditations in it. And you can try each one. You can just see which one works for you. The one that works best for me is the fourth state of mind. So concentration, what you're trying to do, either with a mantra or watching your breath, is you're trying to bring your mind, mind to what's called a single pointed state. And then once it is focused on this one object that is concentrating on, your mind is supposed to disappear. It's supposed to basically drop the mantra or drop the breath watching on its own without effort. Uh, and your mind is supposed to stop. And then you have a chance to see what you're really like underneath, underneath this anxiety filled barrage of thoughts that you're always happening, having. Um, so the, the last thing that you're trying to get to, the last stage after uh, association, contemplation, and concentration is meditation. Meditation is the art of doing nothing. You cannot do meditation. By definition, if you're doing something, you're not in meditation. Meditation is a state you're in when you're not doing anything, when you're not doing anything physically, when you're not doing anything mentally, when you're not doing anything consciously. You're just making no effort. You're literally being completely still, physically and mentally inside and out. That is a state that you're trying to achieve. But there is an oxymoron, which is for true meditation, you're not even there. The thing that's trying to achieve the state of meditation cannot actually be there in full meditation. So the, the, the method that I learned um, was basically that you just sit there and you close your eyes and for at least one hour a day, you surrender to whatever happens. You don't make any effort whatsoever. You make no effort for something. You make no effort against something. If something travels through your mind, then you let it go. If there are thoughts that are running through your mind, you let the thoughts run. What's kind of going on is that your entire life, things have been happening to you, some good, some bad most of which you processed and resolved, but a few that stuck with you. And over time, they stuck more and more with you and they almost became like the, these barnacles stuck to you. Uh, and you lost your childhood, uh, you know, sort of your childhood uh, sense of wonder and being present and being happy. You lost your inner happiness because you built up this personality of unresolved pain and errors and fears and desires that have glommed onto you like a bunch of barnacles. And now how do you get those barnacles off of you? How do you strip them off of you? Well, what happens in meditation is when you're sitting there and not resisting your mind, these things will start bubbling up. 
It's like a giant inbox of unanswered emails, tens of thousands of emails going back to your childhood. And they will come out one by one and you will be forced to deal with them. You will be forced to resolve them. And resolving them is doesn't take any work. You just observe them. But now that you're an adult, now that you have some distance in time and space from previous events, you can sort of just resolve them you can be much more objective about how you view them. Someone just mentioned peyote. Yes, that psychedelics are a bit of a cheat code in this, although I don't recommend drugs for anybody because I think you can do it all through pure meditation. If you wanted to accelerate ahead, you know, psychedelics are good for that. Um, there's, a, there's a good book that uh, Michael Pollan wrote recently called How to Change Your Mind. And I think that is a brilliant book that everybody should read. Um, in any case, so with meditation, over time, you will resolve a lot of these deep-seated, unresolved things that you have in your mind and it is different for everybody and once they're resolved there will come a day there will come a day when you sit down in the morning to meditate and I, I recommend morning one hour a day because anything less is not enough time uh, to really get deep into it but uh, I would recommend if you really want to try meditation do 60 days one hour a day first thing in the morning and if you if you sit there do that after about 60 days you will sort of be tired of listening to your own mind. You will have resolved a lot of your issues or you have to heard them enough that you will know, you'll have kind of seen through those fears and those issues. And what'll happen is one morning, you're gonna hit mental inbox zero, okay? If you know the inbox zero concept, it's when you open your email and there are no emails and it's zero email. And that is a pretty amazing feeling. Uh, that is a, now, I don't want to describe this because it's kind of nonsense to, to use these descriptors for other people, but it's a state of somewhere between joy and bliss and peace. Uh, and once you have that, you don't want to give that up. If you can get a free hour of bliss every morning just by sitting and closing your eyes, that's worth its weight in gold. That will change your life. Um, in terms of uh, how to sit still for an hour, by the way, meditation isn't hard. All you have to do is sit there and do nothing. Just sit down, close your eyes and say, I'm just gonna give myself a break for an hour. This is my hour off from life. This is the hour I'm not going to do anything. Yes, if thoughts come, thoughts will come. I'm not gonna fight them. I'm not gonna embrace them. I'm not gonna think harder about them. I'm not gonna reject them. I'm just gonna sit here for an hour with my eyes closed and I'm going to do nothing. How hard is that? Why can you not do anything for an hour? What, what's so hard about that? Just give yourself an hour break, that's it. Uh, the book I, I mentioned was Michael Pollan, P-O-L-L-A-N. He's famous for being the New York Times, uh, uh, I think he was a New York Times uh, uh, journalist, and he wrote In Defense of Food and The Omnivore's Dilemma, uh, and this is his most recent book. I actually don't recommend the apps. I love what the Headspace and Calm guys are doing, and I'm a big fan of them, but for what I just described, that method will not work with an app because the app will clutter your mind with the instructions from the app. No music, no noise, no sound. Just sit in a quiet, dark place. Put your back against something. If it's the first thing in the morning, you're not gonna fall back asleep, so it's okay to lean. You don't need any fancy postures or poses. You just need to sit down in such a way that you're comfortable. So put pillows underneath your knees, uh, You know, put big cushions underneath your butt. Whatever it takes, get super comfy because you don't wanna move for the next hour. You just wanna relax completely and do nothing. All you're doing is giving yourself one hour off. I think the apps are great training wheels, but you know, at some point you gotta learn how to ride the bike. Uh, someone asked, can you talk about going through and resolving those thoughts? Um, the thoughts resolve themselves. I know that sounds hard to believe, but you just kind of have to sit there with them, that's all. The reason they don't get resolved is because you're running away from them or because you're fighting them. If you sit there with something long enough, it will get resolved. Uh, I mean, listen, all day long, there are things that bother us and those things sit in front of us and annoy us until 10 minutes later, they're gone and the next thing is bothering us. So when you sit with something long enough, it does go away. It's not like it stays there forever but some things just take more time. But there's nothing to do other than just to let it be. Just let it, let it come up, just watch it, let it be. How do you know you've hit inbox zero? Oh, you'll know, it's not subtle. When you hit inbox zero, then meditation arrives. And when meditation arrives, this is a whole different beast. My drug of choice, honestly, these days is meditation. Somebody asked me what my drug of choice is. I like red wine, I won't lie. Uh, and you know, living in California, we've all tried cannabis here and there, but uh, meditation is it.
that's that's my main drug of choice. That's the one that I get high on every day. What is the noise behind you? It's a fireplace. <laughs> Someone asked, does seeking inbox zero defeat the point of it? Yeah, I mean, in some very deep sense, yes. Like for true, true meditation, you can't have an objective. You can't be seeking anything. But I assume I'm talking to a general audience here, not to advanced practitioners. For a super advanced practitioner, um, you don't want to seek anything. But it, it, it is kind of contradictory. It's like, well, then why sit down and meditate in the first place? Um, you can sound really clever by saying, you know, there's no point to it. You're not supposed to do anything. And there's no reason to do it, nor should you seek it. But then you actually wouldn't do it. So it would defeat itself, you, you defeat yourself at the starting line. Now, you've done almost like, what, 100 plus podcasts? Now? Probably 150 episodes. Okay. So now you have a, a wide enough like sample statistic to see of these successful people. Are you seeing commonalities as, as leading to their uh, success in their careers? I, I think there are a few things that come to mind right away. The first is, now this could be a selection bias. Maybe I'm choosing people who are more prone to have certain things in common than others, or I'm attracted to people in a way that, uh, that biases this. But at least 80% of the people I've interviewed across all domains have a daily meditation practice of some type. Uh, certainly, if you want to cut down on monkey mind, the first step is just to become aware of it and kind of observe it like a really shitty comedy in your head. You're just like, what is my brain doing? This doesn't make any sense. Uh, and 20 minutes in the morning is a great way to do that. And I'm, I'm, not particularly, um, I'm not particularly in favor of one versus another. I found TM, Transcendental Meditation, to be very helpful because it's presented in a very secular way. And I find the white noise of a mantra the word mantra bugs me so much, but a word that you repeat over and over again to be very helpful. Uh, but Vipassana, there's a, there's a good book called Waking Up by Sam Harris. Sam Harris, who's a PhD in neuroscience, has been on the podcast and talked about this. Tara Brock, also fantastic. 80 plus percent have some type of meditation practice, even if they don't call it meditation. So I've, I've for instance, interviewed uh, Amelia Boone, incredible <coughs> endurance athlete, the most successful female uh, endurance uh, athlete in obstacle course racing in the world, but also in like 2012 at the world's toughest mudder, I think it was about 1,200 competitors, probably 90% male. She came in second place out of everybody. That's a 24-hour race. I mean, she is super tough. And uh, you know, she said, "Well, I don't really have a meditation practice." And I was like, "What do you do when you're running?" And she's like, "I, I either listen to like one track over and over again." or I sing one track to myself over and over again. I was like, well, that sounds a whole hell of a lot like meditation to me. <laughs> uh, and uh, then Arnold Schwarzenegger, for instance, this was a really cool example. He did, he does everything, 100% <laughs> Arnold. Like when he goes, he really goes. And uh, he did, I think it was Transcendental Meditation for a year. And then he felt like he hit a certain plateau in the benefits and he stopped. But he said that the benefits persisted for decades. Very, very cool idea. Uh, you know, the, pro the, the, the prospect of that is very exciting.